Tuesday is October 16th and uh, what I'm going to be demonstrating today is an articulated arm boring tool device that uh, is used for hollowing out deep pieces of work such as a flower vase. This is a prototype that's being developed by a local manufacturing company, the owner of which is in our local Spokane wood turning club. And I'm just, this little piece of plastic pipe in here is just to hold it in, out of the way. As you can see, as I let loose, it wants to swing. And I've got a little rubber band here that kind of keeps everything held together. When everything is loosened, you can see that, that it, it, it's an articulated arm. It's kind of a scissors action. It has a pivot point down here at this end. There's bearings in here, this bar is about 10 inches long and then there's bearings at this joint and this is about 10 inches long and this block right here is where actually the tool is inserted and you can see some little set screws here where it is tightened down. This particular block is drilled out for a three-quarter inch rod. These are, uh, I have several of these tools, I'll show them to you in turn that I developed for another boring system and I homemade these. Here's a picture of a cutting tool that's meant to be inserted into a deep hollow form and cut away the walls. <clears throat> this is a straight boring tool. This would be typically used when you make the initial plunges in, into the workpiece and, and uh, create a, the start of the hollow form. This tool is on actually a 5 8 inch shaft and it's a scraper and you would use this typically for uh, finish work and, and for doing the finish cuts inside uh, a vessel. Again, the articulated arm system and also another system called a captive arm which is a longer arrangement were developed so that you could insert the tool into a deep hollow form where the typical handheld tools would not uh, work as well. For purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to uh, get this little piece of junk wood here that it's about oh five inches in diameter or so, but it will work uh, well to show uh, how this cuts. In this case, this tool actually you can point it around here, maybe you can see it better. This is a round cutter. It's made out of carbide. It's very, very sharp. Carbide tools cannot typically be resharpened, so what you do in the case of this is usually on the front or side edge is where the cutting takes place. So as this area gets dull, you loosen the set screw and just turn it a quarter of a turn and that presents a whole new edge. So basically you get four bits or four cutter tools for the price of one because you just incrementally turn it. So this is a very, very easy system to use, uh, most especially uh, for uh, people with motion disabilities, such as I have, or people that are just starting to work. As you can see, it's supported at this end, the pivot end, and also uh, here, the tool rest. This is a little critical. The tool rest, given the type of tool based on those that I've shown you, uh, has to be presented to the piece of work. A pretty much in the middle of the work and I can see where the center is there and this this is adjusted height wise so the little round carbide tip presents itself better. I'm going to stop and, and uh, adjust the camera so perhaps you can better see what's going on here. I'll go ahead and begin doing some cutting or some boring in this, you'll be able to see this happen. Uh, primarily I want you to see the, the action of these, these arms. This is an extremely smooth system as you can see if I let go of it. Uh, this is probably something in my lathe that's not quite level. It tends to want to float that way but it is almost effortless to use this articulated arm or the scissors action. You'll notice that I can by adjusting it, I can present the, the tool to the wood in a lot of different forms. And 
it, so it, it's extremely, extremely versatile. So let's cut a little bit of wood here, and I'll show you what this what this looks like. Again, kind of watch the action of the arm. I hold on to the uh, clamp block with my right hand, and with my left hand, with the heel of my hand against the tool rest. Never ever do I put my hands on the work side of the tool rest. But here I can control the motion. You can see as I cut around the corner, as I the, the motion is similar to a, a handheld tool, but it, again in this case it's supported at both ends. So you can see as I cut away at the bottom of the hole and then come around to the side, and then I can pull it this way. So I have a and you can see my hand. Uh, when you're making little cuts like this, uh, usually you do them in increments. You put the, the, the heel of your hand against the tool rest and you grip it. And to move the, the cutting bar, you just close your, tend to close your fist and then walk your hand out. See if I can make a fairly aggressive cut. You can see the form of, of this, and I did this intentionally to show you some of the versatility of this. It's, it's, as this goes around slowly, it's out around. Actually, what I'm going to do, I think you've seen this portion, I'm going to stop the camera and refocus on this so you can better see the, the action of the cutter tip in here.